Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. Today I'll be talking to you about another very basic fundamental topic which comes very much from your history taking and it's about is there an association between diminished ovarian reserve and luteal phase defect. So when we have a look at multiple studies and let, let's say have a look at the history and then what do you say look at the history and you look at the history is do you have any spotting that tends to occur and you say do you have any spotting that is in the follicular phase and I'll, I'll tell you always do that is there spotting in the follicular phase which is in the first half of the cycle and is there spotting in the luteal phase and why is that important so it's it's not a firm rule but the general rule is Spotting in the follicular phase is estrogen dependent and lower estrogen levels cause spotting in the follicular phase and problems in the luteal phase and luteal phase spotting is very much progesterone dependent. It's not a, a, a must and there could be a mixture of these two happening somewhere but that is the norm. So what are the clinical signs that are used and the clinical signs we use are short luteal phase, bleeding and spotting in the luteal phase and Generally, you ask an ovulation occurs on day 14 and 24 day the period starts. And do you ask this question? I'll, I'll say if you want to understand the reproductive cycle better and you want to improve your results, then ask those fundamental questions in history. We know after age, image declines and an ovarian reserve tends to decline. And the question we need to ask is, does corpus luteal function also decline with lowering of reserves and what happens in luteal phase defect and in luteal phase defect there is inadequate progesterone exposure to the secretory endometrium and the role of the corpus luteum is to generate progesterone and this progesterone supports the secretory endometrium so why would a luteal phase defect occur and a luteal phase defect tends to occur primarily due to a defective corpus luteum and remember that and the second reason is it could occur due to inappropriate endometrial response to estrogen and, and that is second and so the study they did an AMH and FSH E2 inhibin B and they had about 2171 cycles out of 755 women 30 to 34 days and these women were attempted to conceive for a very short period, less than three months. And anybody who was infertile was excluded from the study and they kept daily menstrual calendars. And what we're looking at for is when did they bleed and spotting and pregnancy. And luteal phase was defined as luteal phase spotting or a shortened luteal phase or luteal phase is any bleeding one or two days or more days in the luteal phase. The luteal phase was calculated by subtracting a day of ovulation by the ovulation predictor kits from the menstrual day start. And a luteal phase of 11 or fewer days was considered to be a short luteal phase. And the age and BMR were similar. And women who bled had a higher estrogen levels than women who did not bleed. And women who had a low FSH were more likely to have luteal phase bleeding. But what they noticed is that there was no bi biomarker of ovarian reserve that was linked to luteal phase defect. So a low AMH did not give you a lower luteal phase defect. Now the question is asked is, why is it that a low FSH has an increased risk of luteal bleeding? And there's a hypothesis is between FSH and luteal phase defect. So if you have a low FSH or you have suboptimal FSH in the follicular phase, follicle response is poorer and follicular growth is hindered and subsequently the corpus luteum that is formed is poorer. So let's look at this way. When, when you don't you get low progesterone levels and corpus luteum is poor, as much as you can, you can look at the LH, you also have to look at the follicle and look at the follicular generation because luteal phase starts from what you recruit in the follicular phase. So the corpus luteum then failure results and the luteal hormones and inhibits start varying and what that leads to it leads to again a rise of FSH and a premature rise of FSH and a premature rise of E2 and a fluctuating 
progesterone level. So you can see what is going wrong. It's going wrong is you have a low FSH and a poor recruitment of follicles and a poor CL due to a poor recruitment and a poor CL and that then collapses earlier that gives rise to a earlier FSH signal and that early FSH signal then is suboptimal leading to an early follicle growth. So it all comes together in this. Now we talk about inhibin B and I know inhibin B has as much as possible has gone away from our uh, armamentarium of uh, ovarian reserve tests and we no longer use inhibin B. So what happens is that we know that inhibin B seems to be lower in women who have a short luteal phase. And it's a dominant hormone and in fact plays a very important part in regulating FSH. So as the functional granular cells start declining and the number of follicles also start declining, inhibin level start going down. And what happens is as soon as the inhibin level start going down, there is an FSH rise that occurs in the luteal phase. And again, as I said earlier, as soon as the FSH rise occurs in the luteal phase, you start seeing earlier recruitment of follicles. And the earlier you recruit follicles and estrogen, you're going to see a suboptimal ovulation tends to occur. And the suboptimal follicular phase sets in, leading to a cascade of events, which is lower Corpus, uh, poorer corpus luteum and lower progesterone levels and shortening of the luteal phase. And thus, we think an inhibin B may play a very important part. And so all this starts coming up. You know, if you are going to have a much lower and, and a, a poorer follicular phase, you are going to define what happens in the luteal phase. So in summary, I would say, see that they, they don't seem to be any, uh, any biomarker which are related so a low AMH or a high FSH does not seem to tell you much about uh, a luteal phase defect but it's important to realize is your first half tells you what's going to happen in the second half poor follicular recruitment on a poor follicular end which means giving a trigger earlier and again that is interrupting the follicular phase giving a trigger at 16 or 15 you are completely going to interrupt the follicular phase leads to luteal phase defect and the, at the end, it is, in summary, I'll say, look after your follicular phase and maybe your luteal phase will get a lot better. So th that's quite an interesting paper and I, I hope you enjoyed it. Do like this page and share the YouTube uh, video and, and let people do know because I think th these are some points which could fine-tune all our, our treatments. And if you want to join us, and you can join me in Dubai in November. Thank you.